Well, 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 here we meet again. Welcome to the jungle. My name is Atilla Yeşilara. As a hobby, I podcast videos about Turkish politics and economy and everything that is about Turkey, really. A country which is living hell. In my last video, I introduced you to the next president of Turkey. Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu, who currently serves as the chairman of the main opposition party, CHP. Please do see video below. And if you like the content, do subscribe, share, you know, click the like button so more people can watch this kind of videos. Though I don't think that's going to contribute much to the societal welfare. <coughs> Now, since my last video declaring boldly Kılıçdaroğlu as the next president of Turkey. The consensus has evolved in my direction. There are more polls showing him beating Erdogan in the first or second round of the presidential elections, which, by the way, will be held on uh, 14th of May. And I think, you know, I'm also an avid consumer of YouTube content. Uh, more and more experts who were skeptical about his leadership, about his campaign performance, about his ability to capture the im imagination of the nation are swinging to the view that, yeah, this guy might have a chance to win the elections. It's not a consensus, I understand that. But uh, the developments are in the direction I had predicted. Nevertheless, There remains a vocal chorus of experts at home and abroad who claim instead of swallowing a bitter defeat in the elections, which will end his career and possibly see him spending the rest of his life in prison. Oh boy, what a fantasy. I wish I could see those days. Mr. Erdogan would simply steal the elections. You know... In Turkey's past, cheating has been widespread and indeed all of the methods to steal elections that I'm going to describe in the coming minutes have been tried with varying degrees of success in Turkish politics. So, I can't, from the top of my head, dismiss the viewpoint that Erdogan will simply not accept the results of a fair election Uh, which anoints Kılıçdaroğlu as president. I think this viewpoint doesn't have merit anymore because it simply reflects the past to the future. That's not humans behave. As Mr. Erdogan aged and become more dictatorial over the years, the opposition has learned from its mistakes. It's now better organized. Uh, it is more coherent in its uh, fight to get rid of Erdogan and really knows how to defend the ballot. In, in brief, I think the proponents of the theory that Erdogan will steal elections are living in the past. <clears throat> so first I'm going to go through common methods uh, of cheating, which really is not the perfect word. I prefer usurpation. But since English is not is my native tongue and a lot of my audience are really not, you know, uh, native English speakers, I decided on a simpler term, cheating. Usurpation means simply staying in power or taking, in, you know, or taking over the government of a nation using foul play. It could involve terror, uh, it could involve paramilitaries, uh, patrolling the streets, it could involve uh, collusion with the army and the courts to declare the results of an election null and void, or Mr. Erdogan simply declaring once again, based on his backing from the main coercive institutions of the state, such as the armed forces, that he doesn't need elections anymore. He is the beloved leader for life. Are any of these possible? There are three methods. Uh, of stealing elections in Turkey. These are ballot stuffing, manipulation of water rolls, and finally, brute force. 
Now I'm gonna first go over the first two methods, uh, namely, you know, stuffing the ballot <coughs> and manipulating the water rolls, which had been in the past tried with some success, to show that this cannot be done anymore, not in the modern age of digital technology, and that the opposition have developed very effective weapons uh, to prevent these kind of outcomes. I'm going to spend considerable time on the theory that Mr. Erdogan can simply call in the army, the police, the national intelligence agencies, or his, you know, alleged uh, uh, private military called Sadat, which is similar to the Wagner Group in Russia, to defend his reign, even if he loses the elections. Let's get started. Let me show you this again. I know these podcasts are not very visually appealing. I am working on it. It took me three years to somehow improve the visual and sound quality of these videos. <coughs> but hopefully after the elections, uh, I'll be doing something about adding more visual enrichment uh, to our chats. Well, the first method of cheating is ballot stuffing. And the theory, which is making the rounds right now in Turkish YouTube, is that Mr. Erdogan has already arranged with the High Election Council, the highest electoral authority in Turkey, to have uh, bags full of fake uh, voter papers. We vote on paper, we don't have digital voting. Uh, and already the results have been determined in the database of the High Election Council. After uh, voting is concluded and uh, the hard copies of ballots are being shipped to the Provincial Election Council headquarters, the police or whoever is carrying these bags will simply swap them, you know, switch and bait tactic <coughs> with the prearranged fake ballots. High Election Council has already a parallel set of results which shows Erdogan winning and voila, Bob is your uncle, though I don't know what that really means. Now, in the past, similar methods have been tried, but in 2017, 2018 and 2019 elections, these have not worked for a very simple reason. One of the main tenets of Turkish electoral law is that each station must post uh, a certified result of the tally at that station, at the gate of the polling station, which are immediately photographed by the monitors of the opposition parties and sent to party headquarters. Now, every you know party has a database which immediately enters and processes these results. So there is, if there is significant discrepancies between the results obtained by the parties and those reported by the High Election Council, there will be riots on the streets. This could turn into Iran in 2009, when, uh, you know, the Supreme Religious Council has stolen the elections from the people. I don't think Erdogan will dare go so far. He can only uh, face that kind of a threat or accept that kind of a risk if he is cooperating with the army to steal the elections, a point I'm going to address in the coming minutes. So simply cheating in Turkish elections in that sense is not possible. Of course, there is the possibility of multiple voting. To prevent that, Turkey has in the past adopted a method widely used in other developing countries, which is namely just, you know, dyeing your finger and you have to show your finger before you vote to make sure you are not voting a second, third, or fourth time. Uh, this time, the High Election Council said it doesn't have the time or the money to arrange for the ink. So, um, in theory, uh, KP voters can vote more than once. A, this is a very pedestrian way of cheating. I mean, AKP will need at least 500 uh repeat votes to change the result by 1%. Imagine if a voter votes three times, you need to arrange like 150,000 people and bus them from ballot uh, station to ballot station. Uh, more importantly, 
the opposition, the main opposition coalition, consisting of six parties called the National Alliance, as well as uh, the third force in Turkish politics, the pro-Kurdish rights party HDP and its left-wing allies have paid meticulous attention in monitoring and defending the ballots. They're going to have monitors at 90% of the polls. Moreover, there are NGOs in, involved in poll monitoring, <coughs> in particular an NGO called Vote and Beyond, which is currently in the process of recruiting at least 100,000 volunteers to monitor ballot stations. There are 190,000 ballot voting stations in Turkey. I think 90% of them would be men or women to be woke and equalitarian. And uh, cheating through that method is highly awkward and very unlikely to change the results. Of course, there is always this claim that out of Turkey's uh, Syrian refugee population, millions have been granted citizenship in return for the promise of voting for Erdogan. <laughs> this is just an urban legend. Uh, anyone who checks the water registers uh, will see that only 250,000 Syrians have been granted citizenship and only 200,000 or less than that is eligible to vote. In fact, the main opposition party, when asked that question, simply laughed it off. It, it, it's not happening. What, what can I say? I mean, if you want to believe in conspiracy theories, that's your problem. Another theory which is making the rounds is the earthquake. Roughly 15 million people lived in the earthquake zone, and according to the numbers of the state, roughly 3 million have migrated out of the area. And only 345,000 of those have bothered to change their voter registration so that they're eligible to vote in their no, new location. Here I blame the opposition. Uh, they should have worked very hard to locate these people and convince them uh, to update uh, their voter registration. Bygones are bygones. Now the theory is those who migrated are probably those who have lost their homes and lied their livelihoods and thus more likely to vote against Erdogan uh, because almost all the polls from the region show that a majority of participants blame Erdogan for zoning violations and uh, very delayed and inefficient uh, quake uh, relief efforts uh, for the damage that currently exists. I, I don't know who these people are, but the theory that only those who have lost their homes have migrated doesn't make much sense. It takes money to migrate, to find a new rental, to start a new life. It looks to me like those who migrated are well healed and the people who really suffered tremendously from the damage are currently living near the wreckage to protect whatever is left over their property, living in tent cities and container cities, and these people are angry at Erdogan. Now, we got to remember, with the exception of the province of Hatay, uh, AKP's lead over other parties is larger than the national average in the quake zone, so if the migrants are normally distributed among parties, the chances are that if they don't vote, AKP is going to lose more votes. So this the theory that uh, those who hate Erdogan in the earthquake zone have migrated away is technically worth uh, paying attention to, but logically it doesn't work. And finally, of course, uh, Erdogan can repeat what he tried in 2019 elections, which is to apply pressure on the High Election Council to declare the results of elections null and void. You got to remember that in 2009, the current CHP mayor of Istanbul, Ekrem Mamoğlu, beat the AKP candidate, Mr. Um, Binali Yildirim, by roughly 25,000 votes in the first election. 
and the Hayek Election Council was essentially forced by Erdogan to declare the results null and void. In the second round, Ekrem Novol just wiped the floor with Pinelli Yildirim. So, you know, when you read or watch these conspiracy theories about Erdogan stealing the elections, you will see this example being repeated time after time. It's not reflective of the current situation and it always misses the end game. Yeah, Erdogan won in the first round, but in, in the final end game, he capitulated. Ekrem Mamul is currently the mayor of Istanbul. So there is no reason to believe this theory. Now, a broader theory that one way or other, if Erdogan loses or if the high election council reports to him that he is losing, he can simply stage a coup. He can call in the army or his you know, paramilitaries, find some kind of excuse to call elections invalid or unfair, or simply say, we don't need elections anymore. I just decided to dispense with them. I'm declaring myself president for life, and if you don't like it, well, sue me. Obviously, the opposition would spill onto the streets and riot, but if you have the army patrolling the streets, Turkey has 5,000 active soldiers, uh, then there is really not that much they can do. So is this theory rational? Will the High Election Court Council, perhaps Turkey's constitutional court, which will be asked for an opinion and Turkish armed forces, collude with Erdogan to help him steal the elections? Obviously, I can't rule it out. But this has never happened in the past. Yeah, currently courts, the army, the police are extremely subservient to Erdogan to the point of sometimes turning a blind eye to his violations of the laws of the country and the constitution. But there is a huge difference between bureaucratic obedience to a democratically elected leader who is going to stay in power for a considerable time and cooperating with a leader who has clearly lost the mandate to govern <coughs> and may not be around for a long time to protect them against legal action. And this is really the case. There is no rational motivation for any justice for any general, or the institutions collectively, that's the high judiciary and the armed forces, to help Erdogan pull something off like that. Consider the risks and rewards for a general who is one of the top brass and he is asked to send his soldiers to the streets because Mr. Erdogan wishes to stay in power. What is the risk-return matrix for, for him? Unfortunately, not her. We do have female officers, and I want to see more of them in the force, but I don't think we have a female general, though I may be wrong on that. I'm really not watching promotions in the army very closely. Now, if this general thought Erdogan is going to stay in power for a long time, say for the next three, four years, five years, he may cooperate with him because he will be promoted, when he retires, he will be given a plum sinecure uh, in one of the state institutions where he'll draw extravagant salary and probably his children and relatives will be given jobs um, in, the, in the civil service. Fair. What if the effort fails? Or what if Mr. Erdogan falls sick? What if Erdogan wins the presidency but the parliament goes to the opposition? What if, God forbid, and I never wish that on anyone, Mr. Erdogan dies in a year or two? The general who cooperated with this coup effort will be immediately put in prison, will be court-martialed, will spend the rest of his life in prison. He will be denied a pension. In fact, in many cases in the past, his property will be confiscated, which dooms his entire family to poverty and him to uh, shame and disgrace. 
to me, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, collectively, the Turkish army is not corrupt. Look, I'm a realistic person. Any general uh, which has control of a drug route or human trafficking will probably make money out of it. I am not a great fan of militaries. But as an institution, it's not part of the corruption network. It's not an official part of the regime. Now, in Venezuela, in Egypt, in Iran, army is the pillar and a stakeholder in the regime. In Egypt, the army is the biggest holding company. In Iran, the Revolutionary Guard uh, control uh, a lot of uh, economic institutions and do get material benefits uh, from the continuation of the regime. This is not the case in Turkey. The easiest way to make money out of your office as a general uh, is to intervene in uh, tenders for military equipment, jet fighters, tanks, um, artillery, etc., etc. But these tenders are not decided by the military, but a civilian institution called the Undersecretary Secretariat of Defense Industries, which reports to Erdogan. Moreover, even though I'm sure some generals are fundamentalist Muslims, some of them are communists, some of them are personal friends of Erdogan, as an institution, the army is largely uh, followers of the path of Ataturk, Turkey's secular leader. Why? You cannot be promoted to the position of general if you have not come through the ranks. So the average general has served 30 years in the military and he has graduated from the military academies like your West Point. We have Kuleli or Harp Akademileri. 30 years ago, all of these institutions recruited only Ataturkists. And the average general serving in the army has been indoctrinated in the ways of Ataturk, in the ways of defending the republic and, and secularism for at least 20 of those years. So to think that many of these generals are friends of Erdogan, uh, that they adhere to his Islamist uh, ideology is simply false. It's demonstrably false. The loyalty we observe among the generals, among high justices, high civil servants, is typical behavior of a risk-averse bureaucracy that we see in China, in, in Russia, anywhere else, simply because these people have a vested interest in promoting their own careers. As long as they expect Mr. Erdogan to remain in power and to confer upon them benefits for cooperating with them, they will do so. Once they realize Erdogan is a dead end, they'll immediately withdraw their cooperation. This has been a relatively lengthy video, technical, I believe, but it must be said. Uh, actually, I'm reacting to a lot of articles in the international press advocating Erdogan will steal elections theory, as well as a huge amount of YouTube content in Turkish, but I don't want to name names. I respect everybody's opinion. A lot of these experts I've had the chance of meeting personally, and I do respect their analysis, so I didn't provide any examples uh, of, uh, of the proponents of, of these theories. Uh, at the end, I want to thank you once again for watching Real Turkey channel, and hopefully in the next uh, video, I'll be focusing on the parliamentary side of the elections to complete this three series broadcast about Turkish elections. I love your comments. Please, if you like the content, like it and subscribe. Good evening from Istanbul.